Hey folks, my name is Gary and thanks for joining me in this video. I'm going to be showing you how I built this bench out of redwood. It's an old deck that I took apart uh, for a job I was doing. Well, thanks for joining me. So we used to have some rickety chairs in this spot and they were kind of unsafe to sit on anymore. So my girlfriend said, we need a new bench. This deck right here is the wood that I used. The screws that held down the deck boards were so rusted that I couldn't pull them out. So I used a circular saw and I cut down the length of the joist. And that gives me a bunch of small pieces that were about oh, 20 to 24 inches in length. We were going to burn this wood, but it stayed stacked up all winter and this spring I decided I might be able to use some. I found this image on redwoodnorthwest.com and it shows you the different grades of redwood. Select clear would be the best. You see there's no knots and uh, it looks the nicest. I, but the wood I'm using is probably construction heartwood or construction common redwood. I used a surface planer to clean these boards. It gives the board a new surface and you can see how it just freshens up the board makes it look new. Gets rid of all that old age gray look. I didn't record myself using the planer, but this is what it looks like. You take the wood and you feed it in the bottom there, and it has some blades inside that spin incredibly fast, and it'll shave off uh, little pieces of wood and give you a nice fresh surface. It's important if you're using somebody else's tools to make sure the wood is as clean as it can be. So I use a wire brush to get as much dirt or any other material off of it as I can. Also make sure there are no screws and nails in the wood. In these clips you can see me marking out the boards. I'm not going to use the full 2x6 as it is. I'm going to cut it down to about a 2x4 size. That way the bench won't be so heavy. As I marked the boards I tried to keep more of the redwood color and cut more of the white or yellow wood out of there. Also if there were some knots I would try and cut those out or mark the board so I would cut most of the knot out and leave the best looking parts. For those of you who don't know, this is what a table saw looks like. It has a blade that comes up right through the middle there and it has a fence that you clamp down. When you clamp down the fence to the size that you want, all the boards that you pass through will come out the same width. My friend Dave let me use the table saw, and this is how the boards look when they come out. It goes from a 2x6, and you get one little strip on the end, and then you get maybe about a 2x2 two two piece, and here's the 2x4 that is left. Like I said earlier, it's important if you're going to be using somebody else's tools that you make sure there's no metal in there. That'll really dull a blade or ruin it even. I use this little wand made by Garrett. I use it for metal detecting, but you can see here how it found this little screw on the end that was broken off, and luckily I was able to just twist this one out. This wood's been sitting out here under my deck getting dirt all over it for months now and it's important to scrape it off with a wire brush before you cut it with a tool. These are some redwood posts that I was able to salvage from another deck job. And you can see here they have some thick gray paint on it, so I use my scraper and scrape it off. And then I use a wire brush on my drill to get some of the most rotten pieces of wood out of there. And then I just sand it down. I use my circular saw and my square to get a nice flush cut on my legs here. You can see how if you just butt the saw up against the square, it'll give you a nice flush cut. 90 degree right there. At this point I had all the pieces cut and I just put it together upside down just to see how it would look. I used this tight bond number three 
It's exterior grade, waterproof, so that means you can use it outside. This is what I use to glue the bench top together. I use this cheap 3 inch brush just to spread the glue evenly to ensure that you have full coverage. I was able to actually wash this brush out and I can use it again for a future project. If you look along the back of the table you can see that 2x6 I screwed in. That provides a straight surface so that all these boards will be flat and straight. And then I just use these clamps here and clamp it down tight. I didn't notice until I edited the video that this end lifted up here as I clamped down tight on the clamps. But I used this board to kind of beat it into place, make sure everything was straight, and in the end it turned out okay. My friend Adam gave me this old Makita power planer here, and you can see how it removes the glue and gives you a nice smooth surface. I'm using these 6 and 8 inch lags to hold the legs on. I used a drill and countersunk a hole about a half inch deep into that 4x4. That way the lag head won't stick out and it will sit, the next board will sit flush against this board here. You can see how I countersunk these holes as well. That way the screw head sits in there. Now that the legs are on, I'm going to lay out these long stringers here so that I can attach them and tie the whole bench together. I like to lay out the board before I just go drilling holes into it. This gives it a nice uniform look and it'll be a lot better when you're done. So I laid out where the holes are going to be and then I use my drill and drill them with that countersink there so that the head of the nails will be hidden. Screws may have been a good choice for this job, they might be a little stronger, but it's fun to hammer nails and they're cheaper. At this point I had to test it out. It was solid. I didn't want to leave any holes, so I used this dowel and some wood glue and I glued each hole with a piece of dowel. Just cut it off with the handsaw and let it dry. Here I am using my power planer again, just making sure that the top is one flat surface, no bumps or high spots. So I used my sanders, I started with a low grit, a coarse grit, and then I went up to about 180 I believe to give it a nice smooth finish. I like using water-based polyurethanes like this. It doesn't have a strong chemical smell and it's really easy to work with too. I used my mixer here on my drill to mix it up. Make sure you don't go at a too fast of a speed because you'll get a lot of air bubbles if you do. I started with the bottom and I put three coats on. Then I flipped it over and put three coats on the top. I was able to finish this within a day because this water-based polyurethane dries really quickly and you could add another coat uh, really shortly after it's dry. To get a smoother surface I would put one coat on and then I would sand it with a really high grit paper, maybe like a 300 or a 320, and then I would put another coat on after that. Now that the bench is in its spot, it's a nice spot to sit and have some coffee in the morning or read a book. And it's also a nice spot to take my work boots off when I get home from work. Let me know if you like how this bench turned out or if you would have done something differently. Thanks.